Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Everybody, whether you are joining the space here or you are watching us live or watching this in the future, inshallah. So uh, welcome back to our 99 Names of Allah session. This is our 20th session, alhamdulillah. Last time we covered the beautiful names of Al-Wali, the protective friend, the close one, Al-Hamid, the praiseworthy, the most praised, and Al-Muhsi, the one who knows, the one who counts, and the one who records. And to, uh, today, alhamdulillah, we'll be covering four names. And each day going forward, we'll actually be covering about four names so that we can finish the 99 names as a whole. These 99 names are these four names for today, inshallah, are Al-Mubdi, Al-Mu'id, Al-Muhyi, and Al-Mumit. And so inshallah, we'll, before we begin those names, as always, we do the Asma'il Husna, we do a recitation of the 99 names. So let me go ahead and share my screen, and inshallah, we will get started with those 99 names. And as always, you can just relax and you can center yourself so that these 99 names just enter and just flow with you. So let's let, let us get in the space. Bismillah. Bismillah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, Al-Salam, Al-Mu'min, Al-Muhaymin, Al-Aziz, Al-Jabbar, Al-Muttakabir, Al-Khaliq, Al-Bari, Al-Musawir, Al-Ghafar, Al-Qahar, Al-Wahab, Al-Razak, Al-Fatah, Al-Alim, Al-Qabid, Al-Basit, Al-Khafid, Al-Rafi', Al-Mu'iz, Al-Mudhil, Al-Sami', Al-Basir, Al-Hakam, Al-Adal, Al-Latif, Al-Khabir, Al-Halim, Al-Azim, Al-Ghafur, Al-Shakur, Al-Ali, Al-Kabir, Al-Hafid, Al-Muqeet, Al-Hasib, Al-Jalil, Al-Kareem, Al-Raqib, Al-Mujib, Al-Wasih, Al-Hakim, Al-Wadud, Al-Majid, Al-Ba'ith, Al-Shahir, Al-Haq, Al-Waqil, Al-Qawi, Al-Mateen, Al-Wali, Al-Hamid, Al-Muhsi Mubdi Al-Mu'id, Al-Muhyi Al-Mumit, Al-Hayyu Al-Qayyum, Al-Wajid Al-Majid, Al-Wahid Al-Ahad Al-Samad, Al-Qadir Al-Muqtadir, Al-Muqaddim Al-Muakhir, Al-Awwal Al-Akhir, Al-Zahir, Al-Batin, Al-Wali, Al-Muta'ali, Al-Barra, Al-Tawab, Al-Muntaqim, Al-Afu, Al-Rauf, Maliku, Al-Mulki, Al-Jalali, Al-Ikram. المقصد الجامع الغني المغني المانع الضار النافع النور هذه البديع الباقي الوارث الرشيد الصبور. So with these names, الحمد لله, we we begin. With the rest of these names, inshallah. And so, as the Prophet ﷺ taught us, that the polish of the heart is the remembrance of Allah. And these names, inshallah, help bring about a bit of that remembrance and how these names are around us. So, inshallah, let us begin. Today's name, first name is Al Mubdi. Al Mubdi is the originator, the creator, the founder, the initiator. And we know that before everything, there was Allah. When there was nothing, there was Allah. And this name inspires us to really reflect on creation and the creator and to contemplate, to really think about 
everything that that is here sometimes we, we 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 get lost in the details of everything sometimes we just you know go through life and it's just all you know just very much broad stroke we don't think about how detailed everything is we don't think we don't take a chance to look at nature and see how intricate some things are how intricate the fibers of a spider web are or how intricate the the leaves of a tree are i think just just these little little things that sometimes we just we just pass over we just color at one thing but when we really look at creation when we really look at the detail of that but then you also look at the human the human body see how complex and how intricate it is it really gives us a sense of awe a sense of inspiration but we identify the source we identify the originator of all this in al mubdi and the root of al mubdi contains the meanings of to introduce to originate to start to do for the first time to bring something from nothing to uh, be the first to do something to devise to invent to do all these things and it's unprecedented having unprecedented novel marvel and innovation and so al mubdi is the beginning thinking about uh, that that force that action that brings everything from nothingness into reality we just think about that effort sometimes we just think it's like a snap of a finger sometimes you know when we when we read the quran kun fayakun be and it is but we then think about what does that look like for allah it's be and it is and it's there but what does that look like when it's translated into our world into our space what does that process look like the development of a child from an embryo the development of, a, of an adult from a child and so on and so forth we see you know for allah this is easy for allah to originate this this is easy but to see that that process put out in our world it, it brings a sense of fascination and so this is a name that really does when we internalize it it gives us the strength to go into action to take one step and then the next but to be mindful of starting that action to be mindful and reflective of when i do an action i have it kind of planned out in a sense of what i can expect what can i intentionally be present to and this name really protects us from get just remaining stuck and feeling that we can't do anything or feeling that we can't start something it gives us that inspiration to be able to start something to do something and so the uh, importance as i lifted up was that the importance of starting something consciously the importance of starting something but doing it with the right intention doing it with the right foresight so not just starting things left and right because they feel good or what not but doing something because you you your heart is in it and and you you've invested the mental time into it and the preparation and this is what will be good of course there's the uh, famous story in surah al-baqarah of when allah says to the angels i'm going to create a khalifa in on the earth uh, i'm going to basically you know create humanity humanity will be there uh, i'll have a uh, i'll have a khalifa representative uh, on the earth and the angels in somewhat just say you know will you create someone or something that will cause discord and fight uh, amongst each other and 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 that response that they give and allah tells them that you know what you know, that uh, you know i know that which you do not know and 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 showing that you know there is there is a conscious thought to this there is a why wisdom to it there's a design to this uh, that something the angels even them didn't know and and they you know in 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 this sense they protested despite maybe knowing a little bit about what what might happen or what what would to their knowledge happen there but uh, allah knowing that this is something that uh, will will bear its fruits and although the angels may not be able to see that you know alhamdulillah allah being able to uh, prescribe that out and so we see that the importance of starting something consciously this name helps give us firmness stability in times of decision making as well as indecision and uncertainty and when we don't even know what to do and help us discern what might be best for us and lastly this name as i mentioned not only intensifies the the that aspect of wanting to do something consciously but being aware being concentrated being focused so this name has an effect beyond its only and beyond the definition we're sometimes given of the originator of course as we said allah is the originator but in the divine creation the the divine sparks that have been given throughout this creation by allah forming all of this creating all of this there is 
embedded in it sparks of al mubdi of origination of creation and so we too have the ability in us to do not that same type of creation not that same type of origination but to take the sparks of it to start something but start something consciously to be able to continue something and so with this name we keep that in mind how can we continue to originate and create within ourselves and the world around us under allah's auspices here and we go next to the name al muid al muid is the restorer the one who brings back the one who leads back it's connected to al mubdi because allah the one is the one who has created everything and then the one who also restores it time and time again the one who uh, not just creates it but the one who then brings it back we sometimes see the cycle of life as we the creation the birth and then it cycles back to death yesterday we talked about this in our khutbah that um, you know the, the human being begins from allah and at the end of life goes back to allah and we we say you know inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun from allah we came and to allah we return and this name goes hand in hand with al mubdi and muid because and al muid then closes that cycle so al muid takes back that which al mubdi has brought forth from the invisible into the visible and closes that circle and we talked about the uh, verse in the quran in surah al fajr where uh, allah says irji he gives a command irji that return and so we mentioned you that uh, as, as dr omid safi put it beautifully that you can't return to a place that you haven't gone before and so you connect back to that that route to that to that place of return because you that's where you originally belonged it's not a new destination it's a place that you are going back to and so when we see the this world when we see when we look at what's around us al mubdi and al murid really connect us with all that is around us because al mubdi makes us reflect makes us ponder about how how all this came to be how all this how intricate is everything like how really connected is it because it shows how much intricacy was put into it how much thought was put into it how much of all this was put into it so we observe that but then al muid allows us to then see how this returns back how this was how these go through cycles how uh, you know not just you know we we have humans that go through the life and death cycle creation goes through a life and death cycle creation goes through different things forests go through successions and different so many different things that that come after after weather patterns and whatnot and so you see so many different cycles there and so it makes us connect with the not just the cycle of ourselves but the cycle of all that is around us and so when we see the world we come to know and when we come to know we come to be closer to allah as the, as the hadith we've lifted up time and time again that you come to know allah, you come to know yourself you come to know the world around you you come to know allah and we not just draw closer to allah or become aware but we become from seers to knowers to seekers and we seek out that destination and so our root in this word in al muid has the meanings of to return to come back to flow back to be traceable to revert to rebound and to just return and go back fully and al muid is the one who brings back that closest circles but also is help it in its in its sense to help us in in our everyday lives helps us be mindful to close the circles we start to close the things that we start to finish the things that we start not just because we want to just cut it off and we're done and it's just too much for us but to faithfully conclude it as we faithfully started it and so we always keep in mind and we keep in conversation al mubdi with al muid that when we originate that when allah originated allah also is al muid and allah will lead back allah will close that cycle and that everything has its a fixed cycle everything has its a fixed portion and allah concludes that and so as we look at that name we transition now to two very beautiful names al muhi the one who gives life and al mumit the one who gives death and the one who allows to die and so al muhi as i mentioned is translated as in many different translations but uh, the translation here the one who gives life the life giver and the one who not only can give life but can create life it has the root meanings of to live to to live to see to experience to witness to lend life to call into being to give birth to revive 
And we are embedded, as I mentioned, in that cycle of life and death, in this world especially, anywhere you look, everything has its fixed end time. This name, it gives us that strength and that awareness to take full advantage that, of course, we, we confront death as a reality as anything else, and that our life is only for a fixed portion. We don't know what that fixed portion is. We, 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 we can ballpark it, but at the end of the day, only Allah knows how long. We can make however many average lifespans that we might have, but at the end of the day, each of our lives is in uh, the hands of Allah, and so we can only do so much, but it allows us to take full advantage of the time that we've been given, so we don't see any minute or any hour as uh, as just something we can waste. We see it as a potential to then do something more. We, we can obviously waste it. We could do it. We, we can waste it if you want, but you, you get that, that heightened awareness to where you're like, wait, I don't know if this might be the last hour I have. This might be the last day. This might be the last year. Let me make the most of this time as if it was that. And so this name, along with Al-Mumit, the one who gives death, they strengthen that awareness, but also that strengthen that consciousness to grapple and recognize that to Allah we belong, from Allah we came, and to Allah we belong. So Al-Muhyi helps us recognize from Allah we came. And so we know our source. We know our source, and so we know our potential. We know what we're, what we're tasked to do. We know how to maybe live our life, or at least we work towards that with that awareness. And then towards a part of our life, we keep Al-Mumit as well in conversation to Allah we return. So we do a check on ourselves. Am I living in a way that I am fit to go back to Allah? Am I living in a way that I, I can confidently go before Allah and be like, thank you for letting me live my life. Here's kind of what I did with it. So it keeps us conscious of not only how we started, but how we'll end this journey. And so uh, Al-Muhi, as I mentioned here, is also the divine regenerative, uh, regen regenerative force in and around us for any crisis. When we look at it, how does it apply outside of uh, our, our own confines? It gives us new life. When we, when we look at if we've gone through some kind of trauma, if we've gone through some kind of loss, if we've gone through a significant change, this name helps invigorate a new life for us that we might have gotten out of a very abusive home or we might have gotten out of a very bad situation and we're starting fresh. This name gives us that comfort of starting that new life that when when you start that new life, there's that calm, there's that tranquility, but there's also a rebirth. When you convert, into Islam, when you have any of these feelings that you awaken to something that might have not been there, you get in touch with different things. And so this name, when we invoke it, when we feel for it, when we when we contemplate on it, it gives us those, those meanings. And so I mentioned that the polish of the heart is the dhikr of Allah as related by the Prophet the remembrance of Allah. And so when we remember Allah, especially in these situations, whenever anything new happens, whenever any of these other things happen, we remember Allah, we keep Allah in conversation because these are those divine sparks around us. And this name is absolutely crucial for that heart work, because especially when we talk about the second part of the cycle, which is death. And so Al-Mumit is the one who gives death, the one who allows us to die, the one who allows to die, who gives that, that end slip, that, that this, is, this is the fixed portion. And the Quran states that you know surely every soul will taste death it is it is it is a it is is a is a definite it is a guarantee there's not many guarantees in life but that's one of them and death is, has become and is oftentimes related as something that we fear something that we have a lot of shame maybe towards or guilt towards naturally you know that there's there's a that not not that those fears are not warranted it's a scary thing. It's a scary thing because it's the, the lives that we live, the connections we make, how, how far we might get or just how uh, connected we might be to the world around us to then have to depart, but then to also go through the death, to, to go through the pangs of death, to go through that process. It can be very scary, but it in, in, in a sense, you know, it's, it's, it's always sometimes very fairly cliche that, oh, no, you can, you know, you, uh, uh, you, you learn to, you know, just, just, you should just celebrate death, just welcome it, go smiling and whatnot. It's a lot easier said than done. You know, it's a very emotional process. But I think about, there's a book that we, used, that we read in high school, some of y'all might have read it as well. It's called Tuesdays with Maury. And one of the quotes in there by the um, uh, by Maury Schwartz, who is the person, you know, being uh, at the center of the story, said, you know, once you learn to, uh, once you learn to, I believe, once you learn to die, you learn to live. And that quote's kind of stuck with me that once you learn to die, you learn to live. He, that, this, this person, you know, obviously 
uh, had a terminal illness here, but learned to grapple with that and in sense, learn to then live. So when we see death, not just as something we're going to just push off, push off, put up, push off, but something that's a part of our discourse, something that's a part of our thought process, we think about that, we learn how to live our life a lot better in preparation for that inevitable. We learn how to reconcile relationships. We learn how to deal with other people. We learn how to be kinder to ourselves because we know we're only here for a fixed portion, whenever that might be. Might be tomorrow, might be 30 years from now, might be 50 years from now. But we, 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 we are able to work ourselves and the world around us to be a better place. And so this name helps soothe that fear of living and dying and the anxiety that comes around because dying becomes, as cliche as it might sound, it becomes like any other attribute. Allah lifts up 99 of these attributes and there's so many more, but death is one of them here. We have mercy, we have compassion, we have al-wudud, we have love, we have all of these different attributes that are there and then bringing death is one of them there so when we look at it sometimes we think in humanity our biggest thing is just our birth and our biggest thing is our death but we fear dying but do we fear committing injustice to the same scale that we do that we fear death and why do we not if allah is al-adl if allah is uh, al-hakam if Allah emphasizes justice, but we live our lives in a way and we don't fear being unjust, what does it say when we only fear death? And so this name gives us that, that consciousness that there's much more to life than death. There's much more to fear in the sense that there's much more to be aware of than just death. Death is not the end of the story because in our, in our theology and our belief that uh, there will be a resurrection. There will be a rebirth. This life is only temporary, and the real life is the one that is to come afterwards. And so this name helps us realize that everything relies on Allah and is in the hands of Allah. Allah is, at the end of the day, the one who has set the time on this, has set, uh, ha has set the, the string on how, how long that this, 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 this tune will play out, how long uh, we'll be wound up for and we'll go. Uh, but Allah has this in the hands. And the root meaning of al-mumit has the connotations of to die, to perish, to lose life, to become dead, to die down, but to be ready to die, to prepare to die. And so grief, pain, worries, these are forms of death we might experience, minor death that we experience. Part of us, when someone close to us dies, we often hear that part of us, part of me died as well. We hear, we hear those things as well, but also in sleep, as we hear in, 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 in hip hop and Nas uh, and the rap that, you know, sleep is the cousin of death. That you know you have that, and 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 Islamically, yeah, it's 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 it's, it's there as well. That you have this this connotation. It's a minor death. It's it, it's that aspect of you know when you are uh, you're, you're just unconscious and you you have no control of what what is kind of going on there. You're just you're just in that vessel for however long you're asleep. But it reminds us that through all these things, especially through sleep, we are constantly surrounded by death. We're constantly surrounded by forms of death, and especially in this time when we turn on the TV and you'll see COVID statistics on how many people have died. But in your everyday life, think about how often you are really connected to and really exposed to death. So it makes us aware of how, 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 how often we are surrounded by this, but then how to prepare for something like this, if that was to come. So in closing, this name teaches us how to not just live, but to live in the moment, to exercise our humanity, and also to discover the other attributes of Allah that are there, that have been come, that have come to us along with death. Death is just one of them. What is all of the what are all of the other ones? What can they all teach us as well? Because death is a given, death is a guaranteed. But this name calls to us that let's discover the other 98. Let's discover the other things in life that are there because those might not be guaranteed, but death is. And so we overcome and we overcome and we know that beyond the corporeal death, beyond the bodily death, 
we also have different things in us that need to die, different egos in us that need to die, different things in us that really need to be polished. Sometimes we say we need to polish the heart. Sometimes we need to cleanse something, but sometimes we become people that really in, on our inside, speaking spiritually here, speaking in the metaphysical, those things need to really to, uh, just need to be shed. Though you know, we sometimes say you need to shed that skin, you need to remove it, you need to have a rebirth of sorts. And But in order to do that, something has to die. Something negative has to be taken out. So it's a part of cleansing. So we look at this name, not just as the bringer of death in the sense of the outside uh, death that's guaranteed, but what about the inside? What negative part of us, what negative ego, what lower impulse do we have that we can do away with that is holding us back from being the better humans from being the creation that Allah has aspired for us to be so let us reflect on these names inshallah how they can not just allow us to contemplate on life's uh, the the finite aspect of life but also the finite aspect of ourself and what we can do beyond the physical death the physical birth and the spiritual, what can we do to be reborn, to be born into a new form and mentally, spiritually to help this world, to help ourselves? And what can we do when we prepare uh, to know that we will be passing as well? How can we change our lives and live it for the better? So inshallah, we will conclude with these names here. And we conclude as always with a dhikr, a meditation of these names, a recitation of these names. Again, so just as you're centered, We'll take this one a little bit slower. And so we'll let these names sink. But remember, Al-Mubdi, the originator, the causer. Al-Mu'id, the restorer, the one who closes the circle. Al-Muhyi, the one who gives life. And Al-Mumit, the one who gives death. With that, let us go ahead and begin. Bismillah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al Mubdi, Al Mubdi, Al Mubdi, Al Mubdi. Al Mubdi, 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 Ya 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 Mubdi. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al Mu'id, 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 Al Mu'id. Al Mu'id, 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 Al Mu'id. Ya Mu'id, 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 Ya Mu'id. La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al Muhi, 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 Ya 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 Muhi. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al Mumit, 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 Al Mumit. Al Mumit, 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 Al Mumit. Ya Mumit, Ya Mumit, Ya Mumit, Ya Mumit, Ya Mumit, 
Ya mumit, ya mumit, ya mumit. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. So inshallah, brothers and sisters, take this name and take these names and recognize that life is not just defined by birth and death, that there's so much more to it, but knowing where we came from, knowing what our return is, knowing these two definite points should help us live life more to the fullest and in the most consciousness and awareness. So Jazakallah Khair, tomorrow we'll see you all again, inshallah, uh, as we're in these last 10 days. So have a blessed last 10 days uh, if, if we don't see you then, but uh, we'll see you inshallah tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.